Today I'm going to do a gouache painting of this cute little black capped conure. His name is Liam and I have to give a shout out to Michael Alcazar. He let me use his own photo as my reference. It's just a cute little bird here. I love him. Michael Alcazar, if you're interested in true crime, he is a retired NYPD detective, a hostage negotiator, an adjunct professor for John Jay College of Criminal Justice. He is an all-around sweet human. I will link up his um, Instagram account. Go give him a follow. He also is a regular co-host for um, Roll Call with the Sarge with Joe Jackalone. I'll also link that in the description. Now I'm going ahead with this Panatone challenge type thing. I've already got clear gesso on there and sketched out the um, conure on here. Now this is just the postcard that you can buy. You can get a pack of them from Panatone. You can mail it to somebody. You, can, you don't have to paint on them. That's just what some artists came up with. I've got all my paints here. I'm using whole bean gouache, just this small set. I'm not using a whole lot of different colors. I find it's easier for me to you know stay with a limited palette i'm using my um, golden maple detail brushes because i love them i love them i love them they are perfect for gouache i've also got this tiny brush it's an escoda that i'm going to try to use because it is really tiny escoda is really good for watercolor and i'm going to try it out for my gouache i think it'll be pretty good for the really small details so I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing in. I'm going to mix a dark color first. We're going to start with his eye. You know I love to start with eyes when I'm doing a living being. It's just a way for me to, I can look them in the eye as I paint them. Kind of like a mental connection for me. I know that sounds weird, but you know, it is, it is what it is. It is what it is, people. But I just do like to do the eye first. You can use two black straight from the tube you know pre-mixed I'm ah, that's not my thing usually sometimes I will use it but I like to mix like a really dark blue and a really dark brown together it makes this beautiful black and I am coming in here I'm gonna put in the black around his eye and then as you see I'm leaving some of that blue of the paper shining through for the highlights now Liam's got highlights in his eyes but they're not like white highlights they are a little bit blue I think that he is near a window so some natural light is coming through so it's more of a reflection than a highlight but I'm just gonna leave that open I'm not gonna paint that black down below here it's a little bit lighter um, his eye it has like a soft reflection but it, it's not one of those hit you in the face reflections where you can see it it's just a little bit lighter gray from the black so I'm going to go ahead and paint those in then I'm going to paint in that little rim around his eye I'm using a, just a gray color to do that and he also has a little texture in that little ring around his eye and I'm just using the black that we've already mixed for his eye to sort of dot in those just dot in those little um, texture marks that's what I'm gonna call them I really like birds you know if you probably will hear my doves in the background I've moved them back into the studio I've moved them downstairs for the summer I mean for the winter and now they're coming back upstairs for the summer um, where I'll probably you know be up here with them more so now I did add just a little tiny tiny little white highlights in that eye um, where I see them then around his eye he has sort of a white a white space around his eye it's kind of bluish grayish white it's not a total white there is some that looks some parts of it that look almost white so I'm going to go ahead and just do the base now when you're doing gouache you know you want to work in layers or at least that's how I do it other people do it differently I think you know there's as many ways of doing gouache as there are artists out there doing it so we've got that first layer I've got a little bit of the base of color of the paper shining through a little bit of that pale blue just to act as sort of some highlight I mean not highlights low lights the low lights the shadows and it's still a little bit wet so I'm, I'm kind of coming in there and darkening it up with a little bit of the darker blue into that mixture it's just a little bit of white and a little bit of my two blues I've got a warm blue and a cool blue I've mixed those 
together with some white to make the shadows. Um, it might, the, the shadows look a little bit pale to me. If I feel like it needs a little bit more of the darker blue, I'll go ahead and add that. I'm trying to pay close attention to my reference. Anytime that you are painting or drawing or just making any art from a reference photo, make sure that you look at your reference photo more than you actually look at your art. Really see the details, really look closely at it. Um, what I like to do in my brain is break it up into shapes and shadows and highlights and so that I'm not actually painting like say the eye or the the area around the eye I'm painting the shapes that I see around that eye so that way instead of trying to paint what I think I see I put that totally out of my mind that this is you know the around the eye area and I view it more as a collection of shapes and shadows that I just need to get them correct the correct shape the correct tonal value which you know is lightness or darkness and put them of course in the right spot the right place so that's how I approach painting anything or drawing anything I break it down into smaller sort of quadrants and then even smaller shapes and then I just try to focus on how light or dark that shape is and you know what the shape is and where it is and then and that's how I do it now other artists they do it differently I'm just telling you how I do it so now I'm going to put that first layer on his little black cap and I'm going with sort of a medium deep gray it's not exactly black I want some of this I'm going to come back with a black on top of this but I want some of this lighter gray to shine through and then I'll probably mix a lighter even lighter sort of gray for the highlights so I will have three values there that I'm working in layers on it'll probably end up being more than three values but the three values is what I'm going to start off with I've mixed up a nice yellow gray for his cheek for that spot around the top of his eye and his little cheek um, and I want it to be a little bit pale too now remember when you're working with gouache you want to do thin layers to begin with and then work up to your thicker layers because if you just blob the paint on there thick really thickly like an impasto or impasto whatever you want to pronounce it like then once it dries it may crack and of course that'll be ugly we don't want ugly paintings we want beautiful cute pretty paintings but you know it's up to you how you want to do it you can try it that way you might find that your particular gouache doesn't crack but for me I'm just going with a really thin layer first now it's not real watered down it's just thin in the application it's still really creamy I love the creaminess of gouache whereas you know watercolor is a lot more watery depending on how you use it the way that I use it it's more watery because I do a lot of glazing techniques now I'm just mixing up sort of an olivey green here for the shadows it's sort of a brownish green he's got some little shadows around his eye and I want to just go ahead and start getting those in notice that I'm just doing tiny little marks with my brush just tiny little brush strokes and I'm being careful to really look at how the feathers are laying on his face how they're sort of flowing around his eye so that I get those marks going in the correct direction if you don't it's not going to look realistic it's going to look a little cattywonka and we don't want cattywonka feathers on our little Liam that is just not going to work people he has to have smooth laying feathers so now I've jumped over to his beak I've mixed up sort of a purpley blue uh, gray and I'm just doing the lighter layers I mean let me let me change that I'm doing the medium layer first while it's still wet I'm coming and introducing some white gouache into it while it's still wet and basically just sort of blending it right on the paper I'm also adding a little bit of black and blue to one corner of that purpley gray gouache because he does have a, a dark you know sort of shadow down one side of his beak where the beak starts to curve around and so I wanted to get that in there and I also left some of that mid-tone gray sh you know shining through I didn't cover all of it with that white mixture of gouache that whitish gray mixture 
So I'm just really trying to pay attention where his highlights are and where the values and the colors change within his beak. His beak is by far the most complicated part of the whole painting. So um, take your time. If you do try this painting with gouache, take your time and really just work a little bit, a little section at a time. Now I'm sort of working the whole beak at once. I'm not working it section by section. I am trying to look at the sections, but I'm kind of going over over it as a whole. So now I've got sort of a really pale blue gray and I'm going across that nostril part, that upper part of his beak or where his beak kind of connects to his face and where the nostrils are. And I'm getting in some of that lighter blue, then a little bit of the, the gray, sort of a lighter gray. And then I'm going to come back in with the mid-tone gray where I see those little bit darker shadows. And then if I really need to go darker, I'll just mix some of that black mixture, which is really just brown and <laughs> blue. But you can use black straight from the tube. It's your preference. Now his little nostril, I'm going to go ahead and darken that in so that you can actually see that he does have a little nostril there. His other nostril is has curved around and you can't really see it here in this angle. I'm going to take some of the darker color and I am just going to come down the side of his face here and I'm also going to go down where his upper beak and his lower beak uh, kind of come together there's a really deep shadow there so I just went ahead and put some dark almost black there it is the darkest gray that I have now I'm just coming back in and I'm adding a little bit of the white and I also mixed in a little bit of brown because Liam has some brown tones in the bottom portion of his of his beak from this picture that I'm seeing now I've never seen Liam in person so I'm going exactly by the picture the colors that I see in the picture and just trying to use that as my guide so he does have some, a little bit of brown so I've added some brown into that gray and then I'm just blending it right into the wet gray darker grays while you know and just sort of letting them meld together on the paper he has a little bit of a highlight down the side the opposite side of his beak where the little black shadow is he has sort of a pale brown highlight going down so i went ahead and painted that in he has a lot of sort of white marks on his bottom beak i don't know if they're scratches or whatever they might be but i'm putting those in and once I put the white in, I'm coming back in with a little bit of that blue, the darker blue, and a little bit of the um, sort of warmer blue, and mixing it in with the gray while it's all still wet, just right on the paper. You can also just do it on your palette and transfer it. I'm just doing it, you know, sort of the lazy way. And once I get that in there and I get the correct sort of colors and shapes in there, then I'm just coming in with my pure white gouache and I'm painting in the lines. He's got light, really light lines coming down his top beak and right on the side of his bottom beak. So I put those in there. And now I'm just sort of refining some of these shadows and shapes and colors in the bottom part of his beak and adding a little bit of blue tint into some areas where I see that it is more of a blue gray. His bottom beak is probably the most complicated because he has a lot of texture on that bottom part so I had to really paint in those tiny little white lines now I'm gonna do the layer for his white part it's actually he has black feathers with white fringes here but I'm gonna do my first layer of white and then come back and add the black over that and start defining the feathers now under his chin um, he has a shadow here, so it's not pure white. So I'm adding a little bit of that brownish gray in there for my shadow. And um, so that you can see that he's really white at the top where the highlight is hitting him. As his neck curves around under his beak, it's a little bit darker. So I've just added a little bit of that brownish gray there. And now I'm coming and adding my second layer on his cap. His cap is completely dry now. So I'm just coming in and adding some darker details. It's really dark right next to his beak. So I'm really trying to get that as dark as I can. Um, you can even use tube black for th this part since you've already got some of the different um, 
mixed black underneath that you can let shine through. So I'm really just trying to get in some of the shadows that I see. And I'm adding a little bit of the lighter brownish gray as well in some areas for some of the low lights. Or I should say mid-tones, mid-tone values. Now I've added some white to my gray. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting tiny little feathers around his face. Notice that I don't have like a smooth line going around his, his head. I have tiny little brush strokes sort of sticking out so that it looks like his feathers are a little bit raised. They're not smoothed down. It's not a smooth line around his head. And then I've taken that lighter sort of gray that I've mixed, which I just added a little bit of white to the gray mixture and a teeny touch bit of brown. And I'm just doing small little marks, brush marks for his feathers. And I'm keeping them kind of in clumps. I don't want to paint every single feather on Liam. That would take all day. And you really don't need it. You just need to give the suggestion of it. Your your eyes and your brains work together to um, complete the picture, so, so to speak. Uh, so if you just give the brain the suggestion that there are little clumps of feathers there, your brain will go ahead and, and just fill, fill in the rest. Your brain is a wonderful, wonderful organ. It is, it is amazing. So you see, I'm not painting everyone. I've just done a little tufts here and there where he has some highlights hitting his forehead and toward the top of his head. I've also added a little bit more of those olive green shadows around his eye in the green feather part but i made his shadows a little bit more toward the olive side now i'm just um, taking a really dark black and going ahead and putting in a really really dark shadow around the outer edge of his eye to separate it from that sort of gray ring he has and you, it's just a subtle detail, but it really made a big difference. Now I mixed up a little bit of a blue-green. He has a little touch of blue-green in this picture, just right along the edges where the green starts to meet the black. And he has a few little um, tufts or little shadows here and there. Again, just like the forehead, I am not going to paint every single feather. I'm gonna, just going to do some little clumps of brush strokes really tiny brush strokes and i'm doing them in sort of clumps it gives the texture of feathers without having to paint every single feathers detail and i'm just working around that side of his little cheek and up into around the edges and i've also changed i've added just a little bit more of the paler green in with that blue green and now I've come back with the darker blue green and just adding it in it's still wet, but the good thing about gouache is it won't mix on your paper. It doesn't bleed together like watercolor. So even if it's wet, if you come back with another color on top of it, unless you sort of mix it with the tip of your brush, it'll pretty much stay right there. The two colors side by side wet. They will not bleed together unless you're working with your gouache really watery. So now I've added um, a really pale yellow and a little bit of white to that green. I'm going to get in his highlights around his cheek. And again, I'm using my really tiny detail brush. I love these golden maple brushes. I will link them below um, for if you want or if you're interested in them. I use these for both gouache and watercolor, but especially gouache, especially with this little challenge that I'm doing with the um, postcards from Pantone because you know the paintings are more small they're only like f four by four not quite four by four the actual painting surface so i'm just using my tiny detail brushes now i've put in a little bit of a warmer yellow into some of that area so now i have a really pale sort of lemony yellow and then in between those little feathers i've got some of that darker warmer yellow just gives it a little bit more dimension and it also gives it a little bit more interest and texture now i'm coming in with my darker um, more golden yellow as as you go down his cheek the feathers get greener and darker it's really he's really got that highlight sort of just around his eye that really pale yellow so i'm concentrating my pale colors around that eye and then as i go lower on his cheek toward his neck i'm just adding a little bit darker greenish yellow um, to the mix 
and then eventually I'll add some really dark greens to give it some um, some little punch a little a little contrast and also to add in those shadows make it look just a little bit more realistic now I have really enjoyed painting Liam he is a really cute bird I love birds you can probably hear my doves in the background they um, yeah they there you go right on cue <laughs> <laughs> that is Dorian Gray, my diamond dove from Australia. He is talking to his sweet girl, Sybil Vane, back there. He is letting her know that anytime she's interested in a date, he is there for it. So now I have mixed up sort of an olivey green, and that is just the green, and I've added a, a, just a touch of brown to it to make it olivey. And I'm going around and just adding in these clusters of feathers that are darker where his upper layer of his feathers are kind of separated and the, it gives us a nice little shadow and that's all I am doing there and again that's just to give it a little bit more interest it also gives it contrast and makes it look a little bit more realistic so I'm just going to sort of pepper those in there around where I see them on the reference photo Again, I'm not copying the reference photo exactly. I'm not a Xerox machine. Are Xerox machines still a thing? Are they a thing? I don't know, but I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a printer. I'm not a copy machine. I am just using the picture as a reference and to guide me in my color choices, to guide me in my placement of shadows and highlights. And of course, I want to get a likeness of Liam, but I'm not trying to get an exact copy of that photo. And again, I'm going to shout out to Michael Alcazar. He is just a wonderful human. And if you can follow him, if you have an Instagram, follow him if you're interested in true crime. He's just a really good guy. And um, I have enjoyed getting to know him online. Now I'm coming in with some of the medium, more medium bluish greens into that darker area. Right on his cheek is probably the darkest area so I'm really trying to darken that up and as you darken that up it actually makes that yellow part that yellow green part around his eye look even lighter and that's that's really an interesting phenomenon that happens when you put a dark color next to a light color that darker color will make that light color look even lighter and the light color makes the darker color look even darker they really um they really sort of play off each other and help pull each other and elevate each other to, to look really nice and give a really good contrast. So now I've mixed more black, which you know is just brown and blue for me. And I am going over this white. I am trying to look at the shape of his feathers. Now I'm not getting them exactly like the reference photo. I'm just kind of, you know, eyeballing it a little bit using my artistic license <laughs> and I'm just painting in these the the basic shapes of the feathers and you know how feathers go in a row and they almost go like fish scales like you'll have a row of feathers and then the next row the feathers are actually in between that top row so you know they're sort of offset from it so I'm trying to get that pattern in there as well under his chin is really dark um, so I'm going a little bit heavier there with the black paint and the darker grays. And now I'm just going to go ahead and continue doing these feathers. Now he has, they look sort of fringy. So I'm pulling some really long dark lines out from the center part of that black to show that it is fringy and just give that you know that feeling of fringiness <laughs> i don't know what else to call it fringiness we're all about the fringiness today people we just all about the fringiness and i'm coming back in with a little bit of lighter gray into some of those areas and i'm just filling in some spots with some feathers again i'm not copying the photo exactly i'm sort of winging it with the feathers and placing them in that pattern like I told you where there's one row and then the next row is sort of in between each of the top row feathers and then the next row is in between that row I, I, it reminds me of fish scales um, and how they are on fish how they kind of overlap like that and are offset 
So that's what I'm going for, the look that I'm going for. I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of highlight under his chin. Um, but I'm not using the pure white. I'm adding just a little bit of that sort of uh, brownish gray into it. Because again, his his chin, under his chin, under his beak is in shadow compared to the side and the top part of his neck. So we want to get that in there as accurately as possible. I'm also adding a little bit of darkness right here where his lower beak connects into the side of his cheek. Dorian is talking today. He is in a talkative mood back there. And I'm, I'm getting pretty close to finished. I'm just adding a few darker details around his eye just to sort of darken up those sort of crinkles that it's it, around his eye has like some crinkly texture so i wanted to get that in there and i just did it with really fine lines of blue paint yeah I, i'm liking liam i'm liking the way he came he's coming out i'm just going to go ahead and add a little a few more dark little um, shadow lines in there and i'm using that escota the tiniest brush that i have today that i'm using today and it's an Escoda watercolor brush, and I'm just using it because it is so tiny, and I want these to be really delicate. I want it to have some delicate shadows, delicate lines, and um, I think that it is doing the trick. So I'm really happy with the performance of this Escoda. It's the first time that I've used it with gouache, so I will be using it again. Look at him. He is just coming to life here, and I'm adding a, a few more. A little highlights down here on his chin, a little low lights in some places. Just trying to get the correct shapes in there and the correct colors. And I, I think he's finished. I think Mr. Liam is finished. Thank you, Mr. Alcazar, for letting me use your reference photo. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you soon.